thank you so much for chatting with us. Oh, thank you. Andrew is a favorite. He really grew a lot, I think, in the last few seasons. Come season four, where are we meeting him? Where's he up to? It's funny that you say that because I, I didn't even necessarily see this as I was reading the scripts, but as we're playing it out and living through these moments in season four, it feels a lot like growing up. It feels like when you may not even necessarily want to grow up in certain ways, um, but you just have to meet the moment head on. Um, it's no secret that John the Baptist is imprisoned um, and that I have been sent out. He, you know, in season three sends me and says, you have a new rabbi, so follow him. Um, but that, it's certainly the rubber meets the road now. Um, and there's a lot of talk this season about, you know, what is our role in all of this? How can we best fulfill this mission? And that's really scary. I think in, you know, even all the way back in season one, um, there was a lot of fear from Andrew about not living up to the call. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to intellectually understand that. It's another to when that moment hits you head on, you know, are you brave enough to face it? Mm -hmm. um, you know, without obviously spoiling anything. Uh, that's what this season has been for me so far is just growing up and integrating that growth into yeah. your character, not just, you know, in your head, but in your heart as mm. well. Because the way that season three was described was is this opportunity for us to learn what is the true cost of following Jesus? What does that look like for these disciples? In season four, is there an overarching theme you think that describes what's happening for the disciples this time around? You know, as we get further along in this story, obviously, it gets more and more precarious, as we know. There's no hiding from it now. Um, there is a lot of darkness surrounding us. And this sort of, this message of finding, seeking, constantly moving towards hope and light in the midst of darkness is definitely a theme this season. And um, it's one thing, again, you think like, ah, oh, yes, okay, I'll <laughs> be optimistic and happy. But when when day after day, there can be some really crushing challenges, um, it's a whole other thing to try to live the messages of Jesus and, mm -hmm. and follow this path. And we're doing the best we can, and there are a lot of stumbles along the way. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what people really relate to as well, because we all stumble, we all fall off the path every once in a while. And and really it's about finding ways to pull yourself back back on. And and you see a lot of us doing that throughout <laughs> yeah. the, the season. And it's good that we see you guys doing that, I think, because as the audience watching on, we go, yeah, I've been there, I've done that. Oh my gosh, I'm glad they didn't understand that bit of this parable because I didn't get it either. You know, like you, you guys create such a, a good avenue, I think, for the audience to have a way into these stories. That's good. We, we totally feel that also. There's plenty of scenes and that continues where we don't quite understand. We're trying to follow along with things that, you know, biblical professors and scholars have been studying for 2,000 years of what exactly does that mean? No, I kind of think it means this. We're like, you know, hearing it once and then turning to each other, like, did you get that? <laughs> Is that what that means? And then living it out and realizing, oh, no, I got that message wrong. And I think it does, you know, we, we try to treat it with grace, treat ourselves with grace when we mm -hmm. fall off the path. And I think that is something that people respond to. How has playing the character of Andrew and his relationship with the character of Jesus affected you personally? What have you learned in that, in that role? You know, it's funny because I, so I come from a secular Jewish family. I'm Jewish and, and, um, Coming onto the show at first, you know, from totally from the outside. So for me, it's been this amazing opportunity to sort of understand or, or as best as I can as an actor, understand the messages of Jesus by literally sitting opposite a table from him and hearing, you know, being at the Sermon on the Mount and hearing, um, you know, you have heard that you should love your neighbors, but I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute mm. you. Th those are messages that are very difficult to, to live by and even understand. And hearing those from the outside, 
it's really been um, really special to better understand what it is that so many people around the world uh, try to live by and set their sort of aim at. Mm. And uh, it's been really, really, you know, remarkable experience for me. And there's such big ideas in this show. Whatever background people come from when they're watching it, there's a lot that people take away. Why do you think some of these messages, whether it is those themes of loving your enemy, whatever it might be, why are they relevant to today's audience? I think these are, are truths that will never not be relevant. I think that in order to live a good life, there are things that, that must be present. Um, loving your neighbor, those around you, um, protecting those who may not be able to protect themselves, being there not, uh, you know, let he among us without sin <laughs> be the first to condemn. As we also say in Rent, the musical. Um, but those, you know, those things, it's, 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 they're such, they're such high go uh, uh, aims mm. that even as we fail, as we aim for them, we do better ourselves and better our communities. Right. And so to see where they originated with Jesus, to see 2,000 years ago us struggle with them, to go and, and sort of try to condemn a Samaritan because he's a Samaritan, like mm. what does that mean? And if that doesn't ring true with today's audience, I don't know what will. Mm. It's like, do you trust or do you... You know, do you not trust someone because of where they were born, yeah. because of what they look like? That's something that we all need to look inward and see. And if that is true, then we need to work on that mm. on, on ourselves. And so I think that is something that people can can connect to when watching the show. So come season four, what is going to be the thing that you really hope people take away from it? <sighs> the thing I hope that that people take away from season four as I say, I try to say this without spoiling anything. Yeah, don't give away too much. I think the thing is um, how to not lower your eyes and head in the midst of a challenge, how to try to meet it head on. And even when it could seem like insurmountable odds, uh, emotionally or in, in any way, um, that you just have to meet it head on and you have to do your best to not lose sight of what's important to you. So well said. Noah, thank you so much for chatting with me. Thank you so much. Wow, and season three was already pretty emotional, so that's, oh. like, that's a big thing. Oh no, season three was just the, the small world that was leading up to the immediate Splash Mountain Ooh. that this season is. Goodness, that's a, that's a good tease. I, I, hope, I hope they use that in the behind the scenes. <laughs> like. They say the struggle is real. I say the struggle reveals how you deal with the monster that's inside you. I don't buy into the luck. I put my faith in my trust in my team. Everything that we done been through. I, 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 gasoline.